this is Android, and that over there is my smartphone, and this is what's on my smartphone, part two. Oh, and I'm Rob Wilson, you're watching C4 eTech, yada yada yada. <laughs> So just to repeat folks, this is part two of what's on my smartphone series, which covers my apps, widgets and personal preferences. If you haven't watched part one yet, click on the link on screen now and I'll see you in about 10 minutes. And of course, this is my setup. It's not perfect, but it's not useless either. It works for me. Now for a bit of cleanup from the last episode with two more widgets to cover. The first is this small data usage widget called Data Counter Widget. I use it for its simplicity, but it also has an app running in the background where you can look at daily, weekly and monthly totals. The one problem is that it's not available on the Google Play Store anymore, but I have included a direct APK file link. Obviously, you download this at your own risk. The other widget is pretty rubbish, actually, and I won't go into too much detail about it right now. But here's a teaser trailer to what it's used for. OK, let's get into the guts of my setup, the main home screen. First off, some of you have noted that I don't use folders. Well, the truth is I do, you just can't see them at first glance. All of these highlighted icons are in fact folders, which work in the usual way. And the simple truth is, I just like an icon image for my folders, because I don't like the folder images. It breaks up the consistency of my home screens. I know which icons are folders because I use them all the time, and I'm able to do this because Nova Launcher allows me to choose a custom icon image to represent my folder. Now, I agree with you, this is idiosyncratic, but that's the beauty of Android. It lets you do what you like, and this is what I like. So in this case, for a folder full of utilities, I've simply used the app I use most often, which is the Nova Launcher icon, although I'm going to change it now just for illustration purposes. Staying in the utility folder, I have a file explorer that many people will be familiar with. ES File Explorer is as comprehensive a file manager as anything you might find on a desktop computer. I've had it for years, and while I've heard of many fancy alternatives, I don't use the app enough to put the effort into changing it into something else. However, one thing I'm very sensitive to is storage space, and the app I use to get a visual representation of this is disk usage. This is basically Google Maps for your storage, in that you can scroll around and use pinch to zoom to quickly see what apps and files are taking up space on your drive. It includes options to play files or delete them from within the app, and it can scan removable storage such as SD cards. And speaking of files, a quick way of transferring them between all your devices is Push Bullet. Not only that, but if you install Push Bullet on a computer, it acts like a notification service. So anything you get on your phone is immediately pinged to your desktop screen. It requires a bit of tweaking if you already have some desktop notifications in place, but it's really cool. Like I say, you can hook it up to all your devices, even Apple ones. The tour of my smartphone now needs to go on a bit of a detour because we now need to look at what's on my smartwatch. Android Wear is the Google application that connects a smartphone to a smartwatch, and I have a first generation Moto 360. I love my smartwatch, and let me tell you, the best way to save battery on your smartphone is to get a smartwatch, because you'll never look at notifications on your phone again. They all go straight onto your watch, which is just damn cool. Setup and config of your watch, however, is mostly done through your phone, so along with Android Wear, I also have Android Wear Central, which is an app store for smartwatch apps. The Play Store still doesn't filter watch applications very well, so this alternative does a good job, and all the app pages link back to the Play Store to download. The other cool thing about smartwatches is the fact that you can have a different watch face every day, and Watchmaker enables you to get creative. That can be a bit time consuming however, so I mostly download my watch faces from a site called facerepo.com. You can use filters to find exactly what you need and all the watch faces from this website are free. Then you can use a QR scanner application on your phone to download the watch face to the Watchmaker app, then send it to your watch and boom. And no, I'm not left handed, I just like having a watch on my right wrist because I'm weird. The third awesome thing about smartwatches is that they can track your physical activity without you having to lift a finger. Now that sounds ironic, but the moment you start wearing a watch, it will tell you what activity you've done, for how long and for how far. 
There are loads of fitness apps out there, but Google Fit is enough to get me doing at least one hour of activity per day. The final application on my top row of icons is another watch, but it's nothing more than the Google Clock app that I use for setting alarms and using as a timer. To be fair to Google, their stock apps are often the best ones, or at least the simplest ones to use. I should also mention that links to all the apps in this series can be found in the video description, which is just under the like button, so don't forget to tap that too. Thank you! On to my next row of apps now, and we start with the BBC News application. The British Broadcasting Corporation is an institution when it comes to reliable, unbiased and well-written global news coverage, and this relatively simple app gives me exactly what I need. However, more perceptive viewers might be wondering why this BBC News app looks different to theirs, and the truth is, this is an older version of the app. It got revamped about a year ago and I hated the new design, so I downloaded an older version of the APK and disabled auto-update on Google Play. So that opens up the question to you, have you ever decided to stop updating an app because you like it just the way it is? Next up is my sports folder which has the two football apps you saw from my widgets in part one, and since I live in Canada these days I have embraced the North American sport of baseball. Unfortunately my Toronto Blue Jays just got battered, but fortunately they have another 161 games this season to fix it. Social media apps dominate the rest of this row starting with the Facebook page manager. This app will let you post status updates and includes analytics for any pages you might own which are connected to your personal Facebook page. Twitter comes next on the social media menu and while I have tried other Twitter clients I always seem to go back to the native app and of course C4 Retech is the first feed I follow. And if you truly believe I am Iron Robin you should listen to me and follow C4 Etech too. And while you're at it you should follow C4 Etech on Instagram as well. Unlike most people I actually like the new logo, it reflects exactly what Instagram is and it makes it dead easy to Instagram your own logo. Boom. And that just about wraps it up for part 2 of what's on my Android smartphone. As always, comments, arguments, likes and subscriptions are most welcome. This final app by the way is Playable from the widget I showed you earlier. It controls the colours and effects of different Playbulb devices. You can sync up multiple lights and with the smaller candle ones you can even blow them out. How cool is that? Thanks for watching, see you in part 3 and enjoy the rest of your tech day.